you so much for stopping by. Um, I'm going to preface all of this with saying we are going to do a lot more testing. I'm just really busy right now and haven't had the time. But uh, I went down a little thought experiment here. I saw a blank this morning and I just got curious about something. So uh, I did one little test and now I'm recording it because I want to keep going down this rabbit hole with you guys. Um, I have done some destructive testing in the K90. I've been very happy. Uh, I forgot to film some of that brain. But this morning, uh, I didn't want to take time to sharpen another blank up, so I just got curious and thought, eh, I, I wonder how it would do just not sharpen. Um, so we are looking at an EDC4 in Bowler K890. Uh, this is hardened to 61, 62 Rockwell, and this is ground down to about 14 thousandths right now. It's very, very thin and delicate. This isn't designed to pass tests or anything crazy. Uh, I don't suggest doing this type of stuff because it's a cutting tool. It's not a lock cutter or anything like that. But uh, I think this just does really show the durability and how, where this is gonna shine as far as a knife steel. Uh, I've always had an issue with 3V. It's a great steel, but as far as how it achieves its toughness, I've always thought it's just a little, little chewier and not quite as stable at the edge as I would like. Uh, partly due to its chemistry and also partly due to the fact uh, how it's made and rolled. Uh, it's very good in longitudinal toughness, chopping into things, but the side loading is about 50% of that uh, longitudinal number. So. Uh, it's always handled the, the side loading just a little less good than I would like to see. And uh, I know some people have done some other heat treats and things to boost that up a little bit, but I, I always thought the, the ultimate solve is to handle that through an improved chemistry just based on what we're trying to achieve. Uh, so after almost a year of poking and prodding at Bowler Udahome, we were finally able to get a limited amount of this uh, K890 roll. I can't wait to show you here what uh, what this can do, not sharpen. Uh, like I said, 14 thousandths thick, unsharpened, so it's just brute forcing its way through these materials. Um, I'm gonna start off with some copper wire here. I just did some initial testing here and I wanted to get the camera on before I went any further. So starting out, uh, this is copper. It's metal, but it's not very hard. So we're gonna see how it does against that. So this is just how you're seeing it. And we're gonna whack it through some stuff here. So buried that into the aluminum, got a little burnishing, uh, but there's absolutely no wear or deviation uh, from the wire or from plowing it into that aluminum plate. Uh, so great start. We'll do another one just to make sure the first time wasn't a fluke. But great test for electricians, things like that. Uh, but not really out of the realm of what a high quality tool steel should be able to uh, be capable of. So again, uh, no edge rolling damage, nothing there. Uh, even that burnishing in the finish wipes right off. So really, really happy with that just on its own. Um, next, we're going to try a number 10 sinker nail. Um, just using these, they were over in uh, Fortner and Josh's wood shop there. Uh, it's just a standard anybody can know. So uh, again, this is more of a hardened material. I do not suggest chopping nails. Um, there's lots of different grades and formats these can come into, and some get really, really hard. So uh, I don't suggest this as a knife task, but uh, let's just see what it can do. Again, no sharp edge, so it's just gonna smush its way through there. And let's see what happens. So right there, boom. So we have a burnished spot there, and that's it. So that wiped right off, and there is zero deviation in that. Uh, that's, that's phenomenal. I'm, I'm really blown away by this. We'll do it again, just to make sure it's not a fluke. So again, straight through that nail and no deviation. So even without being sharpened, where it's just smashing its way through there, the full edge weight 
is just being squarely applied to this hardened material and it's just mushing its way through there without any compromise to that tool edge. So I'll do another one just because it's kind of funny and fun to me. Uh, and then I'm going to mention something else here that I'm noticing while doing this. This is something I was really happy about uh, in my destructive testing. So I'm happy to see that uh, this is consistent piece after piece. So again, I uh, don't know if we're going to see that there, but there is no wear at all on the material. Uh, the finish has started to wear a, a tiny bit just as it's because uh, the tumbled finish, that rounded edge is starting to burnish a bit. But what I find interesting back here is there is no mushrooming of that uh, domed edge back there. So I'm hitting that with a dead blow hammer and it's having no effect on the spine there. So uh, very, very happy. And that's where uh, I think the chemistry of this is really, really appropriate for bringing that expectation for a hard use knife into the 21st century. Um, it's not as corrosion resistant as some other steels. This is going to have corrosion resistance on par with about M4. Uh, we are working on some methods of improving that corrosion resistance, but that's going to take further time. But right now we have something that's really, really nice that is going to hold a phenomenal edge. It has great toughness, so we can design this in a way to not pass test, but we can utilize all this performance of this steel to make better performing tools. So. Uh, you know, you guys getting your knives, you're realizing these really pick. They've got sticky edges on them. They cut really well. They're efficient. And we're able to do that because of these high-end materials. So you can get more performance out of your knife and just have that confidence of knowing that this is a just a failure-proof material uh, by any practical standard. Uh, before I sign off here, I haven't tried this, so we're going to learn something together on camera. Um, if this is a number 10 nail, here, I don't know what the hell this is. Uh, I found this in a paper bag back there, but that is a thick, thick nail. And uh, that's a lot of material to just smush your way through without a cutting edge. But I don't know, I, I'm just curious. Um, maybe I have a false sense of confidence, but we're gonna, we're gonna try this out here. Keep your fingers crossed. Make sure I don't hit my knuckle into this fixture. through whatever grade a nail that is in that thickness uh, again we've got burnishing but there is no damage to that edge or to the knife um, that is that's what I'm talking about um, this this is amazing so anyway uh, with this done uh, I don't think there's anything else I can constructively do right now but uh, I got to get back to work but I just wanted to share I know we've had some questions um, on how this is going to perform, how we feel about it, what's it for. Uh, this is most analogous to CPM3V. This is Bowler Uta Homes, uh, highest ductility grade in their particle steels. And I'm so happy we were able to get this little sample billet rolled finally. Uh, like I said, this took a really long time, so I'm not sure what availability is going to be like moving forward, but we have plenty of this on hand and we're going to make a bunch of fun stuff in it. Uh, with this type of performance, we're gonna make uh, scandies and a lot of things that are efficient, uh, full flat grinds and things that where we can really take advantage of the amazing properties that this Bowler K890 has to offer. So uh, with all that said, I'm gonna get back to work, but thanks so much for stopping by and I hope you found this to be enjoyable and informative. But uh, we'll, we'll talk to you again soon, all right? Okay, so real quick before I go, uh, like I said, I am here alone right now filming this, and after reviewing that film, I realized the close-ups didn't really show anything clearly. So I wiped the knife off with some WD-40. I realized I had a little bit of nail bits uh, embedded in the surface, but uh, after taking the WD-40 to it, uh, I, I can't tell that we did any testing to this blade. Uh, that is insane. So uh, yeah, if you've been wondering about the performance of K890, there you go. Uh, we'll have some more official testing coming soon, but it's only gonna get better from there as we put a sharpened edge on this and uh, it's more efficiently moving its way through material. But wow, uh, 